today's video, I'm exploring something called Lex AI. It is a writing application that wants to help you to better use AI whilst writing documents. This can be any way from marketing to your poetry. Whatever it may be, this wants to help you to refine it. Today, we're gonna to review it and see whether it's right for you. So welcome, my name is Francesco. If you're new to the channel, do subscribe. And if you're wanting to learn more about AI tools and resources, we do have a official guide to Productivity AI that will be linked below. It's free to download, you can get it in the description. So I checked out Lex, I can't remember, quite a few years ago. It says October 2022 when it first came out. And that was primarily when this sort of technology started becoming much more popular, generative AI. And naturally, um, I haven't really checked in on it as much since. Seen a few updates. The company doing very well every they're called. They have sort of like a, a combination of productivity and AI apps that are just doing extremely well at the moment because they're solving smaller but powerful problems. Now, I'm going to explore whether it's a good writing app for you. Now, before we begin, like we normally do, there's two pricing options. There's Lex Free and Lex Pro. Lex Pro is... Lex Pro is $144 per year, billed annually. You can get an $18 a month subscription. It's a little bit steeper, but the aim is to help you have unlimited access to the AI and smarter AI models that are part of that. Now, this essentially, when you'll see, as we explore it, you'll see it is really just giving you less limits to what you actually have in the free plan. So let's begin, and I created a document earlier that outlines hopefully some of the productivity tools that parents could use, and I wanna explain how this could potentially be helpful. So this is a document, very much like Google Docs, you know, very much an editor. Now you have a command bar which you can access as command K, and there are a few AI things that you can do straight away. You can run checks on it, which is a feature that you can access up here in the right-hand corner, but Essentially, you can choose the checks that you want to do. So for example, brevity, which I say all the time, like these are small words that you add in <laughs> that are just pointless. I have that all the time. Brevity, you know, you could add passive voice, being a more active voice in there, and grammar. Well, you can run these checks so that what the AI is going to do is essentially pick out the points that are bad and things that you could potentially change. Now, this is incredibly helpful because it's sort of like combining Grammarly with document creation, which is something that people typically do now, like writing, using Grammarly as an editor, and then fixing later. And um, essentially what it's gonna do is bring up some recommendations, apps dot. And actually I did a grammar check just before, so that's probably why it didn't bring too much up. And you can skip through these, so it brings up relevant things, and you can tick on a little bit like what Grammar Grammarly does. So the checks are an incredibly useful way to just improve the, the sentences that you're writing. There's also a chat bot type thing that allows you to communicate with your document. So for example, you could say, get feedback on your article idea, and it will start to produce something and recommend examples that it could help improve it. You can copy that and drag it in, which is helpful. You can also upload a file to help provide more context, as well as add context from other Lex documents that you've got in your account. So you can also create a prompt and save it, which is a really helpful one. You could create a new chat. You could view their prompt library, which is available as a separate portal. But the idea behind this is to produce a helpful assistant on the side. Now down here, this is where you can change your model. Obviously this is, uh, I'm limited to a few of the GPT, uh, O-mini and things like that. But these are all the other ones that you could use. Essentially, they're the LLM models that you could be using to get better results. Now, as you can see, this is a really nice design. I want to talk more about the document facing stuff of it. It's quite minimal as a way, but there's a load of hidden features. So for example, if you did want to go through the revision history, you could go all the way back to the start where I started and scrub through and you can see a progressive uh, development of my writing. And I quite like this because if you're a writer and you want to be able to see details about your uh, particular writing piece and how you grew and what you deleted, that's quite nice. There's also a version as well. You can create different versions. Now, this is not necessarily revision history. It's almost like you could create a version for marketing. You could create a version for salespeople. You could create a version for, I don't know, sales, busy mums that are in sales. 
uh, busy dads that are in marketing. Do you get what I mean? You can make different versions of them, but of the same primary document and use the AI to refine it. So that's pretty helpful. Now, there are loads of different things down here. They're like more just like nice add-ons like these, parenting hacks. You can change things and refine the title to be more useful. You can, uh, I think I've shown you these. You can use a focus session, which is quite nice, like write first draft. And then you could be like, the target is an additional thousand words. And you get this really nice focused experience. Um, and when you finish it, it will obviously give you an indication of how long you've done. You've got 29 minutes on it. You can see a table of contents, prompt builder, which you can just bring in at any time. Settings where you can actually improve the context of the document. This is a really helpful thing because the language model is going to know more about your document if you provide more about it. Like, what's the objectives? Who's it for? Um, intended audience. What are the goals of this to convert more people to your software or subscription, whatever it may be. And you can also increase the creativity on it, I guess, which is a, I guess, a factor of uniqueness of your content. So obviously you can change the model from here too. You can see the settings as well. Uh, and you can see what's AI text and what isn't, which is quite nice. So I know for SEO, that could be really helpful because then you could see what's actually been changed. You can see comments as well. If you leave a comment for somebody else, it means you can share it as a team, and this does have a team subscription to it. You can also see the rewrite button, which is built in, and ask Lex, which is helpful as well. So Lex appears on this side, and you can also resolve comments too really easily, which is good. So the premium version essentially takes what you've already got, but just sort of boosts it up. There's smarter models because you're going to get better results with it. Unlimited access because you're limited to how much access you can get of this AI. I haven't hit that limit yet. I changed quite a lot, but of course there are limits. And naturally, um, they're saying as well, you can potentially save money if you don't use ChatGPT. If you use ChatGPT with this now, then you're probably paying a lot more, but this is a lot cheaper collectively uh, for the year. So they want to you know, $20 a month, this is $12, so it's $8 a month cheaper than chat if you were to use it, and you get access to different models as well. And um, there's also an iOS app. Um, I didn't know they had one. Um, or no, so it's a new feature coming for the iOS app if you wanted to write on the go. So overall, this is really interesting. I'm just going to point out another feature. You've got the ability to writing statistics, which is nice, like sort of developer-like way of seeing how you're progressing. Um, it's a lot different from when I initially reviewed it. There are probably a lot more features I've touched in, like basic stuff, like insert image, insert text. There's also a bunch of formatting as well that appears neatly at the top here. So it is a, a writer type experience. You can export stuff into PDF, copy it, send it to even ConvertKit, which is a nice integration, as well as team members to access it too. So there's a bunch of things in this app. And if you're looking for a more focused writing experience, I think you'll find something like this quite useful. I would probably say this is more designed for marketing, uh, salespeople who need assistance with copy, improving SEO writing, and just general marketing help guides and things like that. But it actually has a lot more potential than you think, especially if you're currently using ChatGPT just for writing. I use it quite a lot in terms of ChatGPT for writing, and it can be not just expensive, but also can limit you in terms of what you can do that's tailored towards the writing experience. So hopefully this review was helpful into seeing whether this tool is good. There are lots of different AI tools, so you can jump over to toolfinder.co to explore more and find more resources. So hopefully this guide was helpful. I'll talk to you all very soon. Do make sure to subscribe, like this video if you found it helpful, and I'll see you in a future video. Cheerio.